One of the fundamental shifts from using film to going digital is how we view the x-ray image. Previously, x-ray images were recorded on a piece of film and needed a view box to see the image. Now we view x-ray images on a monitor instead of a view box. As technology advances, we get better and better monitors. First, we had the CRT monitor on the left. To view the image properly on a CRT monitor, you had to stand directly in front of the screen. Standing at an angle would distort the image. Now we use LCD, LED, and OLED monitor monitors to have a much greater resolution. Post-processing allows technologists the ability to adjust the image before sending it to the PACS system. This is incredibly important to allow us to orient the image properly before it is read by a radiologist. The image can be flipped both vertically and horizontally. The icon is different in every system, but generally looks something like this. This icon flips the image horizontally. My radiologist wants to view the x-ray image as if the person is standing right in front of them. For example, here is your right side field of view, and here is your left side field of view. As Ash approaches, asking if you want to battle, this is the right side of his body, and this is his left. Notice that the left side of his body is on the right side of your field of view. Thus, when you orient the x-ray, you want the patient's left side to be on your right side field of view. When I took this x-ray, for some reason, the patient's left side ended up on my left side field of view. So I will need to flip this image to get it oriented properly. You can also flip an image horizontally. There are many factors that could cause the orientation of your x-ray to not appear correctly when you take the image. For example, on this x-ray, I accidentally loaded my DR cassette upside down. In order to fix it, I'll need to flip this image horizontally. You also have the option of rotating the image 90 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise. When annotating, you're adding text to the x-ray image. It is strongly recommended to use lead markers on all x-ray images. Annotating positioning markers is frowned upon. There have been many legal cases involving the use of annotated markers because technologists assume they know the left and the right side of the patient's body after taking the image. For example, you take an image and forget to put on the lead marker. This is what shows up on your screen. Can you identify the patient's left side? If you said this is the patient's left side of the body, then you are incorrect. This patient has dextrocardia, which means the apex of the heart is located on the right side of the body and the image will need to be flipped horizontally before being sent off to the radiologist. Same thing here. You forgot to use your lead markers for this bilateral knee x-ray. Can you tell which knee is left and which one is right? Not all annotation is bad. In fact, sometimes it's required, especially in surgery after taking fluoro images. Magnification allows you to zoom into parts of the x-ray image. Many times you can use the scroll function of your mouse to zoom in and out of images. Window width adjusts contrast. Usually you can hold down the left mouse click and move the mouse side to side to increase or decrease contrast. Window level adjusts brightness. Usually you can hold down the left mouse click and move the mouse side to side to increase brightness or decrease brightness. Image inversion allows you to change all of the blacks into whites 
and all of the whites into blacks. This is a useful tool when looking for rib fractures or other very small fractures. Digital subtraction allows you to remove bony anatomy to view vascular anatomy. This is all done automatically with your software. The software will take a base image, and then after you administer contrast, it'll take a second image. Then it will subtract the two images, leaving you with just the contrast. For example, image A is the base image, image B is the base image with contrast, and image C has subtracted image A, just leaving the vasculature. Pixel shift is done automatically in post-processing. It corrects blur by taking multiple images and focusing on a different point to reduce motion. Region of interests allows you to select an area of the image to compute the numeric average pixel to help diagnose. The Picture Archiving and Communication System, also known as a PAX system, is a system that allows for the integration of image acquisition, storage, and interpretation. As a technologist, you will both send images to and retrieve images from the PAC system. Providers will access the PAC system to view your images. Digital imaging artifacts can be broken down into one of three categories, image receptor artifacts, software artifacts, and object artifacts. Image receptor artifacts include dust and dirt, which are easily removed by an alcohol solution. It does not cause permanent damage to your system. Ghost images are caused by an incomplete erasure of the imaging plate. To fix this, you'll need to perform a signal erasure technique. This does not cause permanent damage to your system. However, both scratches and physical damage do cause permanent damage to your system, and you'll need to contact a professional to repair. One type of software artifact is dead pixels. To fix a dead pixel, the software can use a technique called interpolation. This is assigning a value to a dead pixel based on the recorded values of adjacent pixels. An irregular pattern from a uniform beam is caused by things such as the anode heel effect. Background radiation can cause ghost imaging on your imaging plate. Thus, it's important to perform an erasure technique on plates that have not been used in a couple hours. Finally, image compression is used to allow large image files to be transported easier. When compressing an image file, there is some loss of data. Object artifacts include improper patient positioning. The proper image histogram needs to be selected for the part that's being imaged. Incorrect collimation will result in a poor histogram and more dose to the patient. Partitioning is putting multiple images on a single CR imaging plate. When doing so, the collimation field needs to be well-defined.